All right. So we're going to continue our series on Romans. Uh, I think it was last Sunday morning I did kind of an excursus, sort of a, a side lesson that covered uh, some, some things related to what we're going to talk about. And that lesson was on uh, grace, faith, and works, and probably talked a lot about faith and defining faith. That's one of those troublesome words that we can, with our religious neighbors, can get into a confusion with and about. And so uh, some of the things I talked about in that last lesson are going to be a little bit repeated or reinforced here as we cover uh, Romans chapter 4 as a whole. Um, kind of looked at uh, the first 12 verses, sort of, in that lesson. We talked about some things in that lesson and related them to that. Uh, but we're going to look at, at that again in more detail and then really the whole chapter all in one big bite tonight. So, so we'll do a little bit of review on that, cover the rest of it as well. So if I was going to try to make points for this lesson, and I kind of struggled, uh, here, here they are. The, we're going to talk about the faith of Abraham and, and, and that, you know, this idea that we don't earn our salvation. It is a gift of God that we don't earn that. And, and what God wants, rather than us earning something, he wants our faith. He wants our allegiance. He wants us to love and follow him. And then there's this important point about how Abraham was righteous and uncircumcised. Um, that's an important point in, in the discourse here, that he was righteous while uncircumcised or before he was circumcised. Uh, there's ideas here about the promise for the Jews and for the Gentiles. Of course, that's a big part of the book, right? This letter is written to the Romans by Paul because of the conflict that the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians are having and, and sort of getting along. And so pointing out that this promise is for everybody, all, all of the people, Jews and Gentiles. And God can do anything. And that's part of Abraham's faith, is that recognizing when God promises something, even though it seems impossible, God can do it anyway. And Abraham did not waver in his faith. So let's jump into our text here and, and find these ideas. Uh, Romans 4, uh, 1 through 12 is that first chunk that kind of talked about in our previous lesson. We'll look at th those again. Just in little pieces, drips and drabs here, rather than reading the whole chapter. Verses 1 and 2. What then shall we say? that Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh, has found. What has he found? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. And there's this idea that we don't earn our salvation. You know, if we get the idea that we've earned our salvation or that we're earning our salvation, and we're impressing God somehow, we are mistaken. We're mistaken in that. God doesn't need anything, and he's not impressed when, when we think we're great. And, and that wasn't the attitude that Abraham had. He didn't think he was great. He had this humble attitude. In verse 3, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. It was credited to him his believing, his faith was credited to him as righteousness. So, what are we talking about? Where is this coming from? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's a quotation from Genesis chapter 15. So, what is it that Abraham believed? He believed God, but what, what, is there something more specific here? If we go back to Genesis 15, we can, we can see what's going on here. And there's this question that precedes what I'm about to read where Abraham was recognizing, well, I don't have an heir. I don't have any kids. I don't have a son. I have a servant, and his name's Eleazar, and I guess by the law of the land, he'll be my heir because I don't have an heir. But God clarifies about his promise. Genesis 15, 4. Then behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man, referring to Eleazar, his servant, this man will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body. He shall be your heir. And he took him outside and said, now look toward the heavens. Imagine looking up to the sky, right? Count the stars, if you were able to count them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Just like the countless stars. 
Then he believed in the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. So this is what he believed. He believed this promise about what God just told him, that in his old age, he would have this promised son. The, the regular old way of him and his wife having a son, not some weird adoption thing, that's how it all ultimately comes to pass. And a Abraham believes this unbelievable thing, that his, you know, his wife's barren, they're too old, but there's this nation promise given. And in the next verses, it goes on to talk about the land promise. But we have this idea of Abraham's faith, his believing this and him following the Lord in that. And that's what is his righteousness, not, not his circumcision, not anything about the law of Moses or anything like that. It's him faithfully following the Lord. Back in Romans chapter 4, verse 4. Now to the one who works, his wage is not credited as a favor, but as what is due. Right? Paycheck, we understand that. But to the one, uh, but to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is credited as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing on the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Blessed indeed, right? We are, have our sins covered by the blood of Christ. But there's this idea here that we don't earn our salvation. You know, did Abraham engage in some quid pro quo arrangement where with God, you know, God saying, okay, if you do this for me, then you'll earn this other thing. You know, that's not how it worked. God made a promise and it was really just in Abraham's case, it was just, uh, it was a promise regardless of what you do, Abraham. Uh, but of course, Abraham was faithful. God gives gifts and God offers grace, even that we do not deserve. But God wants our faith our faithfulness, and our loyalty. Abraham believed God, and he didn't just agree that that was true, but he actually followed where God led him. And he made some mistakes along the way. But big picture, he loved and trusted the Lord. His life was transformed by following and obeying God. You know, if you think back to the beginning with Abraham, he... <laughs> He was an idol worshiper. He was called out of that, called to this new land, for God to just to just follow God to this promised land. And he had this, this faithfulness, this loyalty, this faith, humbly following God when we do that, like Abraham. Humbly following God is not earning our salvation. It's faith. And we should have that faith, too. Verse 9 in our text. Is this blessing then on the circumcised or on the uncircumcised also? For we say faith was credited to Abraham as righteousness. So this, this is the big question, right? In circumcision versus faith. So circumcision is sort of shorthand for the law of Moses, for the Jewish practices. This is one of the, the obvious things that Jewish people did, made them Jewish, and all the Gentiles are like, well, they're the weird ones that get circumcised. So that's a dividing division marker. And the whole purpose of the letter to the Romans was to get the Jews and the Gentiles to welcome each other and to get along and to recognize that they're all welcome in Christ. So while circumcision is exclusive to the Jews, faith and righteousness is not exclusive. It's for the Jew and for the Greek. And that's part of the lesson here. Verse 10. How then was it, and the, it is the righteousness that, that was credited to Abraham, how, how then was it credited while he was circumcised or uncircumcised? And then Paul answers this rhetorical question, not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while uncircumcised, 
so that he might be the father of all who believe without being circumcised, that righteousness might be credited to them, and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also follow in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, which he had while uncircumcised. And that may be a kind of a lot of circumcised, uncircumcised. What are, what are we talking about here? Abraham was righteous and uncircumcised. So he was counted as righteous in chapter 15, where we just went back to Genesis chapter 15 and quoted that. But it wasn't until chapter 16, chapter 17, that he ultimately was circumcised, that Abraham was circumcised. So, logically, it was before he was circumcised in chapter 15 that Abraham was already considered righteous. So it wasn't due to the circumcision that he hadn't actually done yet. So that's not related. You know, that's, that's one of those hang-ups the Jewish people were saying, well, you have to be circumcised to be righteous. No, that's not right. So Abraham is the father of all who follow God by faith. So it's both for the uncircumcised, the Gentiles, and for the circumcised. But not just because they're circumcised, but because they're also following God in faith, following Christ. So that kind of leads us to this second section of the text we didn't really touch much on in my previous lesson. Romans 4, verses 13 through 25, which is the end of the chapter. So if we look at verse 13, it says, For the promise to Abraham, or to his descendants, that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is nullified. For the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, there also is no violation. So again, we get to this idea of the law of Moses and faith sort of being pitted against each other, or contrasted. The law of Moses is not Christ. You know, we get our ultimate inheritance through Christ. If we, as Gentiles or, or Jews, continue to trust in the, the law of Moses, we look to that as our standard, the Old Testament law of Moses, instead of faith in Christ, we miss the boat. We miss the inheritance. We miss the promises that are in Christ. And we only keep the wrath of God instead of the ultimate forgiveness that we're promised in Christ. In verse 16, For this reason, it is by faith, in order that it may be in accordance with grace, so that the promise will be guaranteed to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, Jewish people, right? But also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So the promise is for Jews and Gentiles, and both of them through faith, and not because of the law of Moses. Faith and grace and the promises, all of these things are, are for the descendants. And which descendants are we talking about? Well, the faithful the faithful Jews are the descendants of Abraham, and the faithful Gentiles are descendants by faith through Abraham as well. Abraham is the father of all people of faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, as Paul often says elsewhere. Verse 17 in our text, first part of that verse, As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you. Again, Pulling back from Genesis again here. So this idea of a father of many nations. Abraham is the father of many nations. It's not just for the Jews, not just for the faithful Jews. It's for the faithful Gentiles also. It's for everyone who obeys the gospel and faithfully follows Jesus as the Christ, as the Messiah, as our Lord and Master, in an obedient faith. Verse 17 the rest of it, 
As it is written, a father of many nations have I made you in the presence of him who believed, even God, who gives life to the dead and calls into being that which does not exist. In hope against hope, he, Abraham, he believed, so that he might become a father of many nations, according to that which had been spoken. So shall your descendants be, that, that prophecy for him, that promise. Verse 19, without becoming weak in faith, he contemplated his own body, now as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So here's the, we're back to this business with the, can they have a son? They're old, and, you know, his wife has already proven to be barren, so now that they're old, is that going to change? They're, you're not likely to get have children in your old anyway like that, 100 years old. So this is the deal with Abraham's faith, and this should be a model for us. He can look at those questions and, and see the impossible. When God promises the impossible, he believes it. He has faith in that. God promised him a son, specifically through his own body and through Sarah, but that's impossible because of all of the situation with their age. But is it? Is it impossible? Well, we know the rest of the story. This, this actually happened. But it seemed impossible, but Abraham believed it. And why shouldn't he? God created the heavens and the earth. He made things that did not exist to exist. Everything. The sun and the moon, all of life, everything on earth. And we know God raised Jesus from the dead brought life from death. God can do anything. Do you believe it? Do you believe it the way Abraham did? Do we live it and follow him knowing that this is true? We live our life that way. Or do we doubt those things? The world certainly doesn't agree that these things are true. But this is Abraham's faith. He has this faith where he believes God can do anything. But do we? In the, in the midst of our very skeptical world, it can be a challenge. You know, do we really believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Hopefully we believe that, but do we also then believe the logical promises that follow? He's the first fruits of the resurrection. Do we believe the promises that we will rise from the dead on the last day when he returns? We need to trust his promises. Verse 20, you know, we think about how Abraham did not waver in his belief that God could do these impossible things. Verse 20, yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in, uh, in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully assured that what God had promised, he was able to perform. Therefore, it was also credited to him as righteousness. That faith where he trusted God could do these things. Abraham did not waver in his faith. And we should not waver either. We should give glory to God. And we should be fully assured that God is able to fulfill and perform these promises that we look forward to as well, to be forever with the Lord. And like Abraham, our faith can be credited to us as righteousness as we follow him in obedience and faith. And that's why we have this example of Abraham for us. It's for our sake to see that and realize how it relates to us. Verse 23, Now, not for his sake only was it written that it was credited to him, but for our sake also, to whom it will be credited as those who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. He died on the cross for us. So Abraham's faith gives us confidence. This, this whole deal with recounting the story of Abraham, this, this, and even the original part back in Genesis, where he was counted as, as righteous for his 
belief. It's, it's, it's to help us recognize that we can have that same deal, so to speak, to give us confidence. When we see faithful Abraham, you know, can we relate to that? He's a great patriarch, great man of faith, and he's the father of the Jewish people. I'm not Jewish. You know, the Abraham was circumcised, and all the Jews are circumcised. You know, so what opportunity does a, does a Gentile like me have to be right with God? Well, really, Abraham wasn't actually even a Jew. He was the father of the people who ultimately became the Jews. And he was called righteous before he was circumcised. So while that fact that he was circumcised helps the Jewish folks to kind of claim him, he was said to be righteous even before all of that. Therefore, we Gentiles are welcome too. And Abraham is the father of many nations. And the nations are the Gentiles. That's kind of a synonymous word, different way to translate the same word, the nations or the Gentiles. The Jews and the Gentiles alike are justified by faith in Christ. So you are included. I am included. We are blessed to be able to be included in this great salvation. So that's chapter four. The faith of Abraham. We don't earn our salvation. Because God wants our faith. It's not a transaction so much as he wants our hearts. And the point was that Abraham was righteous even before he was circumcised. So we can lose any misunderstandings that Abraham was only righteous because he was a Jew, which he wasn't. Or because he was circumcised like the Jews because he was considered righteous before ever being circumcised anyway. And it helps us emphasize that God's promises are for everybody, Jews and Gentiles. We need to always remember that God can do anything. He created the heavens and the earth. He raised Jesus from the dead. He was able to have Abraham and, you know, ha even being an old person, was able to have, have a son. And Abraham never wavered in his faith, and neither should we. To go back and look at verses 7 and 8, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds have been forgiven and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. You know, God is holy and just and can't really abide any sin because he's holy, because he's just. But he's also full of grace. And the way he reconciled that was with Jesus. You know, the wages of sin is death. Those wages have to be paid. But they were paid on the cross by Jesus for us. And Jesus is calling each of us to follow him. So, are we doing that? Are we being faithful in the way that Abraham is faithful? Are we following that great example? Are we being loyal and faithful and obedient? Have you been buried with him in baptism, risen to walk in a new life? Are you on track to be faithful until death, to receive the crown of life, so that we can be forever with the Lord? If there's anything we can do to help you to have the faith of Abraham, we want to help you with that. We're going to sing this song. It won't be very long till this short life shall end. So, Judgment Day, we don't know when Judgment Day will be, but we know our life will end, and so that's sort of the Judgment Day for us in a sense, because we can't do anything else after that. Here we are living, and while you're living, make some good choices, and let's honor God and have the faith of Abraham as we stand and sing.